Luffy's devil fruit is one of the most important aspects of the story. His devil fruit has allowed him to defeat some of the strongest characters in this universe. In the Vano arc we get a big twist. Luffy's devil fruit is not a random fruit that turns you into rubber, the fruit has the ability to warp reality. Since the end of the Vano arc Luffy has been able to use almost the full potential of his devil fruit. But what would happen if Luffy ate a different devil fruit instead of the Gomu Gomu no Mi? How would the One Piece story have developed if Luffy had eaten Kaido's dragon fruit instead of the gum gum fruit? Let's start the story in Luffy's childhood. It's the first chapter of One Piece all over again. Only with a small but very important difference. In Makino's party spa, Luffy doesn't snack on the Gomu Gomu no Mi, but on the fish fish fruit mythical model Seiryu. In this timeline Shanks did not steal the gum gum fruit from a world government ship, but instead stole the dragon fruit from Big Mom. Do you remember the scene on the roof of Onigashima before rooftop peace? There Big Mom talks to Kaido about his fruit. Apparently after the fall of rocks Big Mom gave Kaido his devil fruit. But in this timeline Big Mom just got off the wrong foot and didn't give Kaido his devil fruit. Instead she kept the fruit to either sell it or to exchange it for an important item such as one of the road poneglyphs. Shanks found out about it and simply stole the fruit from her. Shanks is known for maintaining the balance in the world of One Piece, such a powerful devil fruit simply cannot remain with Big Mom. With a dragon fruit in his bag, Shanks then travelled to Fusha village to kill some time. And then everything happens like in the original timeline. Higuma starts a conflict with Shanks and Luffy eats a devil fruit. In the original timeline Shanks pulls on Luffy's arm and we see Luffy's rubber abilities in action for the first time. In this timeline Shanks also pulls on his arm, but instead of stretching, blue scales form on Luffy's skin. Luffy transforms into his dragon form for the first time, similar to Momonosuke on Punk Hazard. Luffy is just as shocked as Momonosuke and wants to transform back, but he doesn't know how. The Red Hat Pirates are of course completely overwhelmed as well, but in the end they all laugh together and in that moment of calm Luffy manages to return to his human form. The next scenes in this timeline are actually quite similar to the original timeline. Luffy is kidnapped by Higuma, Shanks saves him and loses his arm and leaves Luffy a straw hat, which originally belonged to Roger. In this timeline Luffy also wants to become the king of the pirates. Then we switch to his childhood with Ace and Zabo. During this time Luffy learns to master his devil fruit, similar to the gum gum fruit. Luffy learns to control his transformations, he also learns about his hybrid form. In the original timeline Luffy lost to Sabo and Ace in their daily fights, but with the help of his new abilities he manages to win against them. This is of course because Zoe and Devil Fruits give their user increased physical abilities. In this timeline Luffy is of course physically superior to his brothers. He also learns to control his various elemental breaths. Luffy learns the Boro breath aka flamethrower, the electro breath aka thunderbolt from his mouth and the whirlwinds and wind cutters. But the rest of his childhood remains quite similar. 10 years pass and Luffy finally begins his journey to become the king of the pirates. But this time the plot develops slightly differently than expected. Because Luffy doesn't need a bow to sail in the east blue. As a dragon he can simply fly around from island to island. Luffy's adventure in the east blue will be like a speedrun. Even in the original timeline Alvida, Captain Morgan, Captain Black, Don Creek and even Arlong couldn't do much to Luffy. Arlong was only a danger to Luffy because he had a home advantage with the swimming pool and because Luffy was still the biggest idiot in the East Blue Saga. He just randomly slammed his feet into the cement of the Arlong Park. This would not work in this timeline because Luffy is no longer made of rubber. Instead he would simply destroy the cement, Dragon Luffy would simply make short work of Arlong. Because as we know from Pokemon, water attacks are not very effective against dragon types. The only one who could really give Luffy problems in the East Blue would be Smoker. This marine captain has a Logia Devil Fruit. With a smoke fruit he can not only produce smoke but also turn himself into smoke. Without Haki Luffy wouldn't be able to touch Smoker at this point in the story. Luffy learns Haki in the second half of the story from Rayleigh. Smoker could therefore simply hold onto Dragon Luffy to stop him from traveling to the Grand Line. Similar to the original timeline Dragon could help his son here. Or Luffy could escape from Smoker with his new Dragon abilities. After all he can fly in this form and he can also create whirlwinds. Theoretically Luffy could create a whirlwind in Loketown that frees him from Smoker's grip. It was raining heavenly in Loketown that day. That's a perfect condition for a massive whirlwind. Maybe Dragon even supported Luffy from afar and turned his whirlwind into a small hurricane. So there are several possibilities for Luffy to escape similar to the original timeline. Arriving in the Grand Line the Stroid crew could continue their speedrun. The bounty hunters on Whiskey Peak are defeated, Mr. Five, Miss Valentine and Galdino are burnt on the little garden, 
Galdino's wax would have no chance against Dragon Luffy's Boro Breath. The wax figure cabinet would never have happened. The Drum Island arc would also be over much faster. Luffy would simply fly Nami up to the castle, but Sanji could still come along to be emotional support for Nami. The real danger then arises through the next two major Logie antagonists in the story, namely Sir Crocodile and Enel. Sir Crocodile vs Dragon Luffy is a very interesting matchup in the Alabasta arc. Sir Crocodile cannot be touched in a normal way due to his sand Logia, however the weakness of the devil fruit would still exist. The sand fruit can be clumped by liquid such as water or blood and can then be touched normally. In the original timeline Luffy was able to defeat Crocodile in this way. In this timeline the whole thing can happen quite similarly. However Dragon Luffy could also use the help of his elemental abilities. Luffy could certainly inflict damage to Sir Crocodile with his Boro breath. When sand is heated too much it turns into glass, so could Dragon Luffy perhaps defeat Sir Crocodile in a completely different way and turn him into glass and then break him? Luffy actually doesn't kill his opponents, his victory destroys their dreams. According to Luffy this is worse than leaving them alive, Crocodile is a bit of an exception here because he still clings to his Utopia plan, even after over 20 years in our world. After the Alabasta arc the Strawhead crew would have traveled to Skypiea. Every Strawhead except for Luffy would have simply flown up with his devil fruit, but Luffy wants to take the true path to Skypiea, namely through a knock up stream. In the original timeline Luffy was only able to defeat Enel because he was made of rubber and could withstand and nullify his attacks. The huge electricity black box cannot be stopped by Dragon Luffy. He cannot stop it with his lightning breath, his whirlwinds or his boro breath. Dragon Luffy can try to stop it, but I don't think that he has a chance. In this timeline Luffy couldn't have defeated Enel, everything would have been hopeless, but Luffy wouldn't be Luffy if he couldn't find a solution to this problem. I believe that Luffy would have teamed up with Viper for this fight and they would have defeated Enel together. Although Dragon Luffy doesn't master Haki yet, he has enormous physical resistance due to to his devil fruit. Electric attack shouldn't do that much damage to him. Viper on the other hand possesses sea stone. With his sea stone and the Reyek Dial he has already defeated Enel once. But before Luffy and Viper can defeat Enel, Luffy has to save Skypiea and its inhabitants. In the Skypiea arc Luffy learns to float other things through his flame clouds, similar to Momonosuke on Onigashima. So Luffy simply takes Skypiea and moves it somewhere else. Luffy in his dragon form then takes Viper and flies with him to Enel. Even before the dude can steal the golden bell, Luffy protects Viper from Enel's attack until he touches him with a sea stone. Viper holds Enel to his body just like Goku held his brother and then Piccolo, uh, I mean Luffy, uses his Boro breath and defeats Enel. We must not forget how physically weak Enel actually is. The man was KO'd by Luffy with a few punches without any Haki or any gear forms. Even Arlong had to take more hits. Enel just wasn't used to taking hits, that's why he could never build up his defense. The following arcs are quite similar. Dragon loses to Aokiji, you know ice is very effective against dragons. Rob Lucci is easily defeated by Dragon Luffy, even Gekko Moria falls quite easily to Dragon Luffy. The next challenge for Dragon Luffy would have been Magellan and Blackbeard in the Impel Down arc. Against Magellan Dragon Luffy would lose again, this time however he would recover much faster compared to the original timeline. After all Zone abilities can accelerate regeneration. In Impel Down Luffy learns about Zone awakenings from Sir Crocodile, a power up that Luffy absolutely wants to have in the future, but Crocodile doesn't know how to trigger Zone awakening. Against Blackbeard Dragon Luffy has a better chance than Rubber Luffy. Dragon Luffy wants to defeat Blackbeard in his hybrid form, but his zone form is instantly nullified by a touch. Through his Yummy Yummy no Mi Blackbeard can deactivate his opponent's abilities with a touch. Without his zone strength boost Luffy can't do much against Blackbeard. But actually this wasn't a real fight, they just clashed and then everyone went his ways. Arriving at Marineford Luffy befriends Whitebeard again, in this timeline Luffy has a huge advantage. He can simply fly to Ace and Marco, Vista and Jozo provide cover for him against the admirals. The rescue of Ace would progress much faster in this timeline. After all Luffy's impel down allies would keep important characters busy, such as Miyok or Moria. On the execution stand Dragon Luffy would have to face Sengoku again, but this time he can create a huge balloon to block Sengoku's attack. Instead Luffy floats the execution platform with his flame clouds, which then brings Sengoku out of balance. Of course Luffy has no chance against Sengoku here either, but the few seconds he was able to create through the flame clouds were enough to save Ace. 
But similar to the original timeline, Ace still dies because Akainu provokes Ace. But at least we get to see the two brothers in a tag team before, only this time both brothers use their fire abilities. Then we come to the time skip and Rayleigh teaches Luffy the three types of Haki. After the time skip, destroyed pirates travel to the new world. There, Dragon Luffy has no problems defeating Hody Jones, Caesar Clown, and even Doflamingo. In this timeline, Momonosuke would not have the artificial dragon fruit. As we remember, the fruit was only created because Kaido was held captive on Punk Hazard and Vegapunk was able to research his lineage factor. Without this research, there is no artificial dragon fruit. Too bad for Momonosuke. The whole Kick Island arc would also play out differently. Luffy could, but wouldn't have to, use his law for food to defeat the sweet commanders Charlotte Cracker and Charlotte Katakuri. A big theme in the fight against Cracker and in the fight against Katakuri was food. Luffy had to eat hundreds of kilograms of cookies and mochi just to have a chance of winning. In this timeline, Luffy could simply use his elemental dragon abilities to defeat Cracker and Katakuri. Cookies and mochi should melt quickly with a boro breath. In this scenery, the entire Big Mom's tea party would surely go up in flames. Escaping Whole Kick Island should not be a problem with a flying dragon. Luffy could easily face Katakuri in the mirror world, or he could simply grab the thousand Sunny in his dragon form and fly away. In the open sea, the Strides then could face Katakuri together. In this timeline, Pedro could even survive. I would even suggest that after the time skip, Luffy has become so strong through his Haki and his physical training with Rayleigh that he could take on Big Mom. After all, zone fruits enhance the physical abilities of their users. Although Luffy now has a zone fruit in the original timeline, it doesn't necessarily make him physically stronger. According to the Road to Laughtale chapters, it is implied that the Nika fruit has properties of both a Paramecia and Zoan fruit. The Zoan component would be Gear 5th, and the rest of the rubber abilities are the Paramecia fruit. Luffy's final challenge then would be Kaido in the Vanukuni arc. But now you might be wondering what devil fruit Kaido ate if Luffy already has the dragon fruit. I think that Kaido instead ate the Okuchi no Makami fruit that Yamato ate in the original timeline. Even without a devil fruit, Kaido was a member of the Rock's pirate crew, so his devil fruit has only made an already powerful tank even more powerful. I think it would also be very interesting if Kaido had the devil fruit that is actually a kind of Vano guardian deity. Dragon Luffy against the mythical dog Kaido. In this match various elements would clash, similar to the fight with Yamato and Kaido. Dragon Luffy will have learned advanced armaments Haki in Udon, and in the fight with Kaido he will learn to use his advanced conqueror's Haki. I also believe that Luffy will awaken his dragon fruit in this battle. There is now an exciting theory that Kaido has not awakened his fruit because he does not use it for the desire for which it was created. In the original timeline, Momo could awaken his artificial dragon fruit. In this timeline, Luffy uses his dragon fruit to free Vano from Kaido's clutches and to protect the island. Azure dragons are mythical creatures that protect others. Through this original desire, Luffy succeeds in awakening his dragon fruit. This makes him faster, stronger and more resilient. Kaido cannot compete with this. Of course, it could also be that Kaido has his awakening here. However, since this was not addressed in the original timeline with this dragon fruit, I do not assume this in this timeline. Dragon Luffy manages to drive Kaido and the Beast Pirates out of Vano, and Dragon Luffy becomes one of the new emperors in the new world. In another timeline, Kaido could of course have stolen the gum gum fruit from the world government. The fruit is still available if Luffy doesn't have it. Through Kaido's flashback, we know that he is not a big fan of the world government. I could easily imagine Kaido randomly attacking world government ships to annoy them, and then he accidentally stumbles on the gum gum fruit. After all, Luffy has a fairly easy time during his adventure with his dragon fruit. There are some opponents who could damage Luffy, but most of them don't seem to have a chance against Dragon Luffy. If this run of Luffy were a kind of speed run, then the dragon fruit would definitely be one of the meta fruits for this run. Who wouldn't want to be able to transform into a dragon? Which devil fruit should I give Luffy next to play through the story? Let me know in the comments. And if you liked this video, why not watch this one next? See you in the next one. Take care.